Mistakes are an unavoidable part of life, but some can leave lasting scars on our hearts. This is the story of a devoted mother who gently placed her baby in a cot, only to return moments later and be met with a heartbreaking sight that made her scream in despair. At just 22 months old, Terry was caught in a tragic fire that left her with burns covering 90% of her body at her home in Chantry, Ipswich, making her Britain's youngest burn survivor. Her mother had lovingly put her down to sleep in her cot, but unknowingly, she left a burning cigarette in the room, setting the stage for the devastating incident. Julie had separated from Terry's father, Paul Calvisbert, a factory worker, two months before the fire accident in 1998. On the day of the tragic event, Paul was at work. Julie had initially moved out of their flat, intending to find her own place and later bring Terry to live with her. However, overwhelmed by how much she missed her baby, she returned to live with Paul, this time as friends. Julie never smoked in the flat, but on this particular day, she just couldn't understand why she did it. She admitted that it was the wrong thing to do. She said, I don't know why, to this day, I did such a stupid thing. The British mom accidentally put the cigarette down in Terry's bedroom while talking to her and walked out. In one of her first interviews after the incident, she said, I regret it and relive it every second of my life. She suffered all this because of me. Sometimes she had suicidal thoughts, but she knew her daughter would still need her despite what had happened. What happened on the 21st of November, 1998, was a tragic experience. The little child had always been a quiet and brilliant sleeper, so Julie could not understand why little Terry would not stop crying after she left the room. At first, it did not occur to her that something might be wrong, but when she noticed that her girl's cries worsened, she ran back toward the room. When she got there, her baby's room was on fire. The frightened mom immediately dialed the emergency number 999 and was screaming aloud, but she couldn't find the right words to say. She said, my girl's in the bedroom, there's a fire. Julie panicked and couldn't go into her baby's room. She later disclosed that many people had told her after the incident that she should have gone in there and gotten her baby. Julie could not get to her baby's room and had to call firefighters to come and help rescue her baby. She was terrified. She tried putting out the fire herself by throwing bowls of water into her baby's bedroom, but it made no difference. After a while, the firefighters arrived. By this time, little Terry had stopped crying. When the firefighters saw Terry, they found it hard to recognize the baby and doubted if the little girl could survive. According to one of the firefighters, Simon Bevan, he had never seen anybody with burns as extreme as Terry's. Her burns were so severe that the firefighters found it difficult to raise her neck to resuscitate her because her body was rock solid. For Julie, it was too unbearable to look at the burn injuries her beautiful baby had suffered. The firefighters successfully put out the flames, and Terry was rushed to Broomfield Hospital in Chelmsford, Essex, where she battled for her life. It was a tense moment for Julie and her family members, who were present at the hospital to support her. The doctor in charge of the baby's treatment almost gave up. He told Julie and Paul that the baby had stopped breathing twice, but they had successfully revived her. He then asked them what he should do if she stopped breathing again. Julie was dumbfounded. She didn't know what to say or do. It was her dad who then spoke and told the doctor to do the same thing he had done. Fortunately, it did not happen again as little Terry was an incredible fighter. Paul was very worried. He thought to himself, is he going to lose his daughter too, after first losing his wife? Now, the interesting thing was that her kind-hearted daughter never judged her. She could easily have hated her mom and never wanted to have anything to do with her again, but she never did. Terry realized and accepted that what happened was a mistake. Rather, she texted her mom and told her that she had nothing to feel sorry about, that everything that happened that night wasn't her fault, and that she would always be her mom. The turning point in Terry's recovery was such an emotional moment for Julie. She said, I was sitting in the chair holding her in my arms, and she just looked at me and said, Mom, just imagine how this woman must have felt at that moment. Terrible, right? That word was the first thing the recovering baby had said in weeks. 
For Julie, that single word made her even more saddened because she thought to herself that all that had happened was her fault. After going through several months of operations and intensive therapy at Broomfield Hospital in Chelmsford, Essex, the then two-year-old girl returned home to stay with her father, Paul, at her grandparents' place. Terry had to endure many operations as her body was badly burned. She had to undergo about 40 skin graft surgeries as the skin had to be replaced as she grew. She also had to have facial reconstruction surgery, which included her nose. When Julie saw her baby after the fire incident, she wept. She says, she was so swollen I didn't even know if it was her. I wasn't allowed to touch her. It was horrifying. She felt guilty, so she decided not to see her daughter just months after the accident. For 10 years, she cut all forms of contact with her baby. This was a very difficult time for her, but she thought to herself that maybe if she didn't have her baby around her, then the guilt might not be so bad. Terry's unfortunate experience almost ruined her relationship with her mother, who could not stand having her daughter around her because she felt responsible for her child's situation. Julie admits she regrets losing contact with her lovely daughter. Later on, she tried to get in touch with her daughter, but social services said she couldn't do that. A few years ago, the pair had an emotional reunion. For Julie, when she met her sweet daughter, it was as though they had never left each other. They both hugged and held each other for a while, sharing the beautiful moment. After that time, they didn't contact each other for a while, but they have started texting each other again of late. According to Terry's mom, sometimes they can go on texting each other for four hours without a break. Despite the girl's difficult situation, she never once lost her smile. Her story touched the hearts of many, and in 2012, an appeal organized for her by the Ipswich Star newspaper raised about 500,000 pounds. This money was donated by her well-wishers, who decided to help with Terry's future. She was also helped through the pioneering work of Professor Peter Zwelski at St. Andrew's Burn Center in Chelmsford, Essex, to help her live as normal a life as possible. In a documentary about Britain's youngest burn survivor, Terry shares that she has forgiven her mom for the fire incident. However, she wishes her mom had spent more time with her during her childhood. Occasionally, she reflects on the past and feels her mom shouldn't have been smoking in their home. Nevertheless, Julie dismisses that thought, reminding herself that it wasn't her fault. Anyone could make a mistake. Today, she is a proud mother who deeply loves her daughter. Her child's incredible strength has helped Julie realize the importance of moving on from the guilt she once carried and letting go of past mistakes. The young girl continues to undergo surgeries to aid in the healing of her damaged skin. Terry refuses to let her fire ordeal define her life and remains determined to pursue her dreams, just like anyone else. Her story serves as a testament to the power of forgiveness and its ability to heal. Today, Terry stands as an inspiration to countless people around the world. I'm really keen to know your thoughts on this story, so please don't hesitate to share your insights in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video and found it engaging, I invite you to subscribe to our channel for more similar content. Feel free to share this video, take good care of yourselves, and I'm excited to connect with you in our future videos.